Today I will show you a project with several aspects. Even if you do not need to charge batteries with voltages of 35 volts and above, using a solar panel, you will find learnings for your projects. Or you enjoy that not only you encounter some difficulties in your projects. Ritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. My wife's sister asked me if I could build her a solar charger for her bicycle batteries. Without thinking and without having a concept in mind, I said, yes, I can. This should not be too complicated, right? Back then, I did not know that this project would take more than a year. First, I made a list of tasks. Number one, I had to find the appropriate plug for the battery. Number two, I had to hack the battery interface because it did not charge when I only applied a voltage to the two thick pins. Number three, I had to find a solar panel strong enough to charge the 635 watt hour battery in less than a day. And number four, I had to boost the voltage of the solar panel to the level needed to charge the 36 volt battery. The plug is from HiGo, and after a lot of searching, I found their distributor in Belgium. They sent me the minimum number of five connectors, including short cables. I do not want to tell you how much this costed, including shipping. After all, it's for my wife's sister and therefore essential. Point one was solved in less than a month. After doing some measurements, I found that the battery started charging when I applied five volts to the small control pin and this pin is connected to the green wire. And the maximum voltage of the original charger is 42 volts. Cool. Point two is solved. This was fast. For the solar panel, I looked at these flexible and portable panels. They are okay, but their price performance is not good. So I decided on a standard panel with an aluminum frame. The panel will be stationary and its weight is an advantage as we will later see. So I went for a 100 watt peak panel of eBay. It should be able to charge a not fully flat battery in less than one day, even if there is not always sun. Point three is solved too. Then I came to point number four. How would you solve this problem? First I thought, easy, I use a cheap boost converter and boost the roughly 20 volts to the 42 volts needed by the battery. As you see, this works fine on the bench. I even added this lovely volt and ampere meter. After adding a five volt regulator to create the voltage required for the control pin, I was ready for a test in the sun. I connected this converter to the input because its maximum input voltage is only 24 volts, not the 42 volts of the converter's output. Unfortunately, it did not work at all if connected to the solar panel. Do you know why? Because the battery has a low internal resistance, it acts like a short. And what does the boost converter do if its output is nearly shortened? It tries to draw the current from the solar panel, of course. And the solar panel? Unfortunately, solar panels have such a curve. If the current is reasonable, they keep their voltage. But if it is a bit higher, the voltage drops rapidly till the booster switches off. Then the panel's voltage increases and the whole thing starts over. So what to do? I exchanged the boost converter with one where I could limit the output current. Excellent. This works if we limit the current to a level below this bend. But what happens if the solar radiation is a bit smaller? Then the curve is reduced and we are in the wrong spot again till we adjust the potentiometer to a new level. What we need is an MPP tracker. Because the project already was quite expensive, I tried to go cheaply. And because I read some good reviews, I ordered this solar charge controller. 
It sometimes is sold as MPPT, but usually as a PMW controller. At least it has MCU control. I hoped it would produce optimal power at the output for my boost converter. When it arrived, I discovered that it does not work without a battery to charge. Only connecting the boost converter did not work. So I added the LiFePO 4 battery I use for my transmitters. Now it worked. The controller charged the battery and the boost converter charged the bicycle battery. Exactly as planned. I even was able to get good power. Do you see the next problem? Yes, you're right. This battery is much smaller than the bicycle battery. When there is not enough sun, the small battery discharges fast and switches off. Not exactly what I need. Also, this controller is not very good. It seems it only chops the current from the panel to the battery. This is why they call it a PMW or pulse width modulated controller. The effect, the panel's voltage is way below its maximum power point and its power is only about 50 watt. I'm moving in the wrong direction. Only 50% of the expected power and because of the needed battery, the price of this setup is relatively high. So I need a better solution. But how does it look like? And where do I get it? Before starting KiCad to create my own design, I again searched AliExpress. After some time, I found this device, an MPPT controller with a boost, not a buck converter. These are pretty rare. After all my setbacks, I was skeptical. Nevertheless, I had a promise out and my wife asked from time to time about the project's status. Of course, she did not want to know the details, just a date when it would be ready. So I hit the order button. Because of the new 15 days delivery time, the controller came fast. And because spring is here, also some sun is available for testing. But one problem has to be solved. I need 5 volts for the small pin. As before, I wanted to use the buck converter connected to the solar panel. But other than before, the input and output ground of the boost converter is not connected. On the PCB of the 5V converter, however, ground on the input and ground on the output is connected. So my small converter would shorten the two grounds and probably draw a high current. Not exactly what I want. As mentioned before, the maximum input voltage of this 5V converter is only 24 volts. So I cannot solve the problem by connecting it to the output. So what to do? Again, not easy. I needed some insulation between the grounds. I remember buying very strange power supplies. 5 volt to 5 volt DC. I no longer remember why I bought them. But fortunately, AliExpress keeps all my orders in its database and I could verify that I should have a few of them somewhere in my lab. After searching a bit, I found them in one of my many boxes. I connected its input to the 5 volts of the converter and the output to the control pin of the battery. Now I'm sure the battery is protected and the converter is not shortened. After adding some heat shrink tubes, everything is ready for a test. I connect the solar panel to the converter and really it shows around 20 volts input voltage. The display does not flicker in reality, by the way. It is because of an interaction with the camera. I can adjust the output voltage to the needed 42 volts. We are on the right track. But what happens now? The output voltage is 0 volt. Only if I press the buttons, it is 42 volts again but only for a few seconds. Not what I expected. It seems I got a defective device and all my hopes are gone. This is the hard life of an engineer and the even harder life of a husband who must tell his wife that she has to tell her sister that the man she married is not as helpful as expected. But before I give up and file a dispute on AliExpress, 
I connect the bicycle battery. Look what happened. The voltage is around 40 volts as expected from a half empty battery. And even better, currents are flowing. So the battery is charged. Not too much, but it is early in the morning. So maybe my reputation is saved. And at least in low sunlight, the converter behaves much better than all my former designs. So let's wait till noon. Now we have nearly full sun. Look at that. The voltage is almost 20 volts and more than 5 amperes flow into the charger. Nearly 100 watts. And it is only April. Cool. Like that, the battery will be charged till the evening. Exactly as promised. And really, after a few hours, the battery switched off charging. Is it really full? Let's check with the bike. Yes, it reached nearly 100%. The missing few percents are not the responsibility of my charger. The battery does it also when charged with the original charger. After all the setbacks, I'm happy with this converter. It does what I expected. It varies the input voltage all the time to find the sweet spot for maximum power, as you see here. With minimal sun, it regularly starts at around 15 volts and searches for the best point. The output voltage is precisely what the battery needs. But there is hardly any current flowing because the panel cannot deliver. This is proof that it is also stable at the lowest radiation levels. But I must add two things to the to-do list. The controller must be protected against rain. And more important, against thieves. Frequent viewers of this channel know precisely why. But this is work for the partner of the sister of my wife. He is a mechanic and much better suited for such problems. And he probably also wants to prove his usability. So finally, this story has a happy ending. My wife is happy and I can continue with my next project. This was all for today. As always, you find the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.